Today, we're diving into five simple yet powerful ways to not only improve your garden soil and help your plants thrive, but also to save you money. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or just starting out, these tips will give your garden the boost it needs. Many people think that the only way to best their soil is by spending loads of money on expensive products, but that's not always the case. We'll be using things you likely already have around you. My name's Thomas, and today I'm excited to show you how it's done. Let's take a look. First up, organic matter. Most people only buy it from their local garden centre, but with an extremely small space, you can cultivate your own for free. I also ha only have a small space, so my compost bin is also very small, but as you can see, it is starting to get somewhere, and the only outlay was to actually buy the compost bin, which you can also do with scrap pieces of wood, and you'll have your own compost bin to add in kitchen waste and any leaf litter you have. For today though, I'm using some spare compost which I had lying around from around May. A common misinterpretation is that it always needs to be dug into the ground to get the effects of the compost, but that's what the worms are for. All I'm doing here is simply spreading it around the bases of these leeks and your crops will still get the benefits of the water retention and also the compost will encourage stronger growth and eventually increase your yields. Now I'm doing this around the leeks because by actually layering up around leeks like you would with potato stems, it actually makes them sweeter and better for blanching. So I always like to do this every year, just to try and create nicer, sweeter leeks. Now let's talk about mulch, which in my opinion is an absolute game changer. Rather than just chucking all your grass clippings on the compost bin like you can see I've done here, why not take them back out and put them to some better use? If you're like me as well and absolutely love to uh, fill your compost bin to the brim, it's probably a good, a good idea to do this just to try and reduce the amount you've got in there and hopefully encourage it to break down faster. So now I've got my nice fresh grass clippings and one thing I like to do just before I ever add it as a mulch is check through it like this just to make sure there's nothing in here I don't want and as you can see I always find a couple of stones for some reason, I don't know why but I do. I like to add mine around the bases of this fuchsia or just shrubs in general so all I like to do then is just take large handfuls and basically put a nice thick layer around the bases. By sprinkling on the thick layer it'll also increase the moisture retention helping to save me precious water and it'll also suppress weeds reducing the amount of work I have to do and it'll also create then a tidier space. About a month later, as you can see here, the grass has already almost broken down, helping to feed the soil. And if you look very closely, just very, very closely at the bases, you can see there are no weeds. Next up, soil compaction. While we talk about the problems and benefits around it, I'll get these lettuces taken out, which, if I'm honest, have become absolute towers. Although they are, they are still perfectly usable, it's just that they've now gone to seed. As you can see, as I'm doing this, I'm having to actually walk on the soil due to the bed being so wide. This is the opposite of what we want to do. Constantly compacting the soil down like this not only affects the development of strong roots, but prevents water from infiltrating the soil. An easy way to get around this, as you can see, is to use wooden boards such as this uh, to warp or bounce on, preventing you from stepping on the soil. A good way to sort of compensate for any compaction is to just regularly rake your soil. This also helps to remove any of the large pieces of debris in the soil because you can then pick them out a bit easier and also creates a nice seed bed for you. Right, I think it's time to get sciencey now, so let's conduct a little demonstration of one of the problems of compacted soil, which is water absorption. All I'm going to do is just take two watering cans and basically have an area side by side of nice aerated soil alongside, as you can see, some compacted soil and pour the water on and see how long it takes for the water to infiltrate the soil. And as this is sped up, you can see just how much of the water actually sits on top with the compacted soil. And also, if I actually just dig slightly around where I poured the water, on the non-compacted soil, you can see the, water, uh, the soil underneath is much damper compared to the compacted soil where it's bone dry and no water's actually reached it. So the water would actually just sit on top of the soil and evaporate well before it gets to the roots. You can also use a fork like I did there to aerate the soil and undo any of the compaction to let it breathe again. Liquid seaweed is an absolute powerhouse at boosting your soil and plants and I love it. And something so easy to do, you wouldn't even think it was real. 
all you have to do is mix a capful with about four and a half litres of rainwater and give your plants a nice drink with it every couple of weeks to help stimulate root growth and higher yields. Rich in micronutrients, it's one of my go-to ways for improving my soil and plants. It really could not be any easier. Finally, let's talk about cover crops. For me, I see this as making the best of a bad time, i.e. the colder months when you're not able to grow as much. Conversely, it can also be used when you just simply have really poor soil, such as down my new allotment where the soil is in parts heavy clay, meaning it's currently not really ideal growing conditions. So I've sown some mustard seed to act as an organic matter, so when they're chopped down and turned into the soil, I'm able to hopefully increase the fertility, better preparing my ground for next year. Also, if you know of any other alternative cover crops that I could use in the future, please do let me know in the comments. Anyways, I hope this video has shown you that improving your soil doesn't have to be expensive or complicated. It just takes a little bit of intuitive thinking and desire. If you've enjoyed this, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel so you can discover more ways to increase your garden's yield. Also, if you're wondering what crops you should put in your newly regenerated soil now, why not click here to find out.